Greetings, this is Time Rider. You're looking at the Matchbox 1E and 2D Mercedes truck with trailer. The toy is based upon the Mercedes LP series trucks, which Mercedes began producing in late 1963. This particular casting represents the heavy duty models, which is evidenced by the headlights in the bumper, as opposed to the medium and light, du light duty models, which had the headlights in the grill. They weren't particularly comfortable to operate since the company had opted for a suspended cab as opposed to a suspended operator's seat. The 1E casting was introduced by Lesney in 1967 and converted to Superfast in 1970. They were initially turquoise with an orange canopy and no interior and a bluish window. The Superfast came in gold with a deep yellow canopy and red with a bright yellow canopy. There was also a military version that came in olive with a light tan brown canopy. The 2D trailer was also introduced in 1967 as a companion piece and had a hook on the back to accommodate as many trailers as a, child's would, a child would choose to attach to it. Both pieces were cast in 1 87th scale. Mine were purchased on eBay in two separate lots. I paid $2.50 for the truck and $2.56 for the trailer. I will do, be doing straight restorations on these two pieces, so stick around. A lot of the Matchbox lorries or trucks or whatever you want to call them will have a small piece that just covers the cab that has to be removed, usually held in by a single post. And then part of the front of the chassis is used to hold it into the cab of the truck, as is true here. Now this is made out of plastic. So when you're taking it apart, you really have to be careful because you don't want to break it. I took it out of the vise here because I wanted to get a better feel for how far I was pushing it. And I did get it out easily. And then, of course, I like to clean up that post because when I put it back together, uh, I want it to go together fairly easily. I clipped the axles here because, uh, as I'm sure I've said a hundred times before, I don't have a drill press. So I'm going to use tubing to sleeve these axles when I put it back together. And then I have to remove the windshield unit, which was held in by a, a single post. Very shallow. You have to be careful not to drill a hole in the roof. And fortunately, because this isn't always true either, this particular casting had a post that was deep enough for me to uh, drill a hole in it so that I could use a a screw to put the whole thing back together. And I use my vac here to suck out all the shavings from drilling that hole. Small drop of oil so I can tap out the hole to uh, receive the screw. You want to go slowly when you're doing this, and you may have to go back and forth a little bit to help the channel clear, but eventually, if you get it tapped deep enough, the screw will go in easily. I know a lot of guys thread it with the screw. I just don't like doing that. I prefer to thread the hole with tap. Now, the trailer, I had to take the wheels off in order to get it apart because that uh, yoke that hooks the trailer to the truck is on a swivel. And that swivel, of course, is held in with another mushroomed post. And I'm going to uh, sleeve these axles as well. I 
I suppose I, you know, this wasn't that bad, but the problem is, is that if I'm going to buy the, or put these two together, uh, I want the paints to be exactly the same color. And then once you get it apart, you, I'm fortunate that this post is also deep enough uh, that once I clean it up, I can, I can drill it and tap it. You know, more often than not, if I'm going to damage one of these, it happens when I'm putting it back together. So I try to do everything that I can to make it go back together as easily as possible. And again, uh, I'll run a tap down that hole. I just, again, like doing it better that way than trying to use the screw to tap the hole out. Sometimes when you're using the screw, what happens is you strip out the screw head, which I don't like. It's so small. It's very small. But now that I have everything ready to be put back together, which is really what I'm doing here, uh... We need to get the paint off of it. Into the soup she goes. Three pieces. Give it a little shake for luck. And then once the paint is off, uh, using a wire brush to clean out uh, the schmutz left by the stripper and get it down to some nice smooth metal. Get all the paint out of those letters on the trailer. Clean up around the hook. It's really kind of a neat casting. You know, I had to do a ton of research, too, uh, to find out what truck this was, because they don't really say. So I must have looked at 20 pictures of Mercedes trucks from the 60s until I... I found a picture of something that looked similar that sort of pointed me in the right direction. I'm using Tamiya White uh, primer on this particular model because, uh, honestly, I don't have any gray. Uh, if I had gray, I, I think I probably would have used gray. But if white's what you got, then white is what you use. Now, making turquoise is actually pretty easy. It's uh, yellow, green, blue, and then white. Now, there's a lot of people that'll tell you that every color begins with white, which is absolutely untrue. It really depends on the color that you're trying to make. Uh, this case, though, white is the correct place to start. And then what I do is I add equal amounts of the remaining colors. And I usually start with smaller amounts. Uh, because anybody who's done any paint mixing knows that the darker colors, it doesn't take a lot generally to move the color a long way. So I think I started off with like five drops of each or something along that lines. And uh, this is still more of the blue-green. And so now I'm going to add the yellow. And once I kind of get the hue of the color where I want, if I need to darken it, I might add a little bit of black. Uh or a little bit more of each of the other colors. I started with less yellow and then wound up adding more to get it more into the turquoise hue. And there it is. Since my uh, helping hands really only has 
uh, one, or I'm sorry, two clips. I had to uh, put the front wheels and the the tongue and boom on another on a separate clip and apply the tack coat. One of the things about doing you know a, a project like this where you have three components that are going to be painted all the same color is that you want to have all of your coats kind of be the same. Because even though you're shooting the same color paint, it is entirely possible uh, to have different colors on each piece if you paint one heavier than another. And as normal, this is a tack coat. Another one of those models that you kind of got to go from all directions to make sure that you hit everything. It's a very detailed model too. It had a couple of fuel tanks on one side and what I assume is an air, an air uh, tank on the other. Once the tack coat has set, uh, I then paint successively heavier coats. Again, you know, moving the, keep the model moving, keep the airbrush moving. You don't want to develop any runs. And of course, you know, like any one of the Lesney uh, carrier truck models, it seems like you have to, you know, be certain that you hit the inside and the outside of the storage container as well as, like I say, the bottom uh, from all sides. Trucks and trailers actually use a, a connection, not quite like what they're using here, but they have what's called a, a pentel hitch, which is uh, just a big loop on the trailer boom uh, that goes onto a hook on the truck. Usually, uh, the truck would have a two-piece hook, and the top of the hook would like lock the boom in place, but... That'd be pretty tough to do on a model of this size. But the detail is amazing. I mean, I, every time I do one of these, I get such a kick out of it. How much uh, time and effort that Lesney put into making sure that these models were very detailed and reflective of the, the actual vehicle that they're trying to reproduce. And then after receiving so many good comments about my Rolls Royce, I actually ordered uh, more of the X35 uh, semi-gloss clear because I do. I think it's more reflective of the type of finish that you would find on a model back in the 60s. I mean, I, it's not that I'm going to abandon the X22 high gloss. I just think that the X35 does a better job of simulating that. And when I'm doing restorations from here on out, uh, I will be using X35 Tammy on all of them. I also bought their flat clear and I want to try that on something. I just haven't quite figured out yet what it is that I want to try it on. I have a project that I'm working on that has a vinyl top and I think I might try using it on the vinyl top. I, I don't think it'll that the flat clear will take away a shine that's already there. I think what it'll do is it won't add to it. 
which the X35 does. It does add to the shine that's inherent in the paint, while at the same time uh, putting on a protective layer. But anyway, let's put this thing back together. Since I can't just uh, mosey out to my workshop and use my drill press to put these axles back together, if I want to do it right, what I need to do is measure the size of the opening. And then even though I was pretty sure they were all the same, I did check it on both the, the trailer and the truck to make sure that I was using uh, a correct size sleeve. Uh, and a big shout out to George Hodges. This is really the way to cut this tubing. Is just use an X-Acto knife or a box cutter or something. And uh, once you get a little groove in it, you can just break it. And it doesn't send a piece flying across your workshop. But you do have to afterwards do a little bit of filing uh, to make it flat on the end. If you're really interested in doing it the proper way. All I'm doing with the knife here is just making sure that there's no burrs on the inside. And then I test fit it. In this case, it was still just a just a little bit too big. So uh, I'll do a little more filing. Uh, and I'll keep doing that until it slides easily into the opening where I'm trying to put the trailer. And it's easy, just easy to do this with a tweezers. That's why I do it that way. And here I am with the front yoke. Uh, just want to make sure that it's going to slide in there easily, which it now does. And now I just have to repeat that three more times. And there's my three axle sleeves right there. And then I use this tool to just get that end uh, open uh, so that there's no impediment to the axle, the original axle, sliding back into the opening. And I do this again with uh, all three axle sleeves. Now I cut these, I used to cut them in the middle, but I stopped doing that and I kind of cut one end a little longer because uh, I just found it works better if I can, uh, you know, make them a little bit shorter than they were originally because I don't want the two axle ends to meet in the middle of the sleeve. I want there to be a slight gap. And then I file off on that end just because uh, I want it to slide easily into the sleeve opening. So I want to make sure there's no burrs on the end of the axles either. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is harder than a drill press, but it gives you a really good looking result. And then with a the chrome pen, I'm going uh, to make that grill look shiny and new. It didn't look too bad to begin with, uh, although my chrome pen wasn't being very cooperative uh, in dispensing ink. So I had to go off screen here with it and bang it on a, that piece of wood a couple of times. And then finally... Uh, here it comes and I'm gonna as long as I'm doing it I'm gonna hit the the axle ends and give them a nice shine uh, so that when I put it back together they look as good as they can look now typically what I do is I would do a tire wash on these tire on these tires but you know they were all in really good shape so I just used a little formula 409 on my toothbrush and I just cleaned them really well And that, that really did do the trick. They came out looking very nice. Uh, the windshield unit, I cleaned it with uh, Novus products. Uh, started with part one, which is just a cleaner to get, uh, you know, just get the dirt and everything off of it. So I'm dealing with uh, raw plastic. And then after that, I used their step two, which is really just a mild polishing compound. Now the trailer had that yoke on it, so I'm gonna, you know, remove a or remove the screw that I had in there, and uh, put the yoke on. And now it's good to go. Swivels like it was brand new. 
to sleeve the axles, I use a toothpick and the axle sleeve. And what I do is, is I, I put the sleeve in and then I insert the toothpick in one side. And that's really just so that the sleeve doesn't continually drop down into the opening. It, it holds it really nice and steady. And then uh, I test fit before I put any epoxy on there and make sure that the, the axle end is going to slide into the uh, sleeve nice and easily, which in this case it does. And then I pull it out and I, I put a, just a, it doesn't take much either, just a small, small portion of uh, super glue. And I use the gels because I don't want it to get all over everything. I want it to kind of stay on the end of that axle. And then once it goes into the sleeve, it will disperse and hold the axle in place. And it's important to me, it always has been, that the wheels roll. So once I get the axle sleeve in, I put it in the appropriate distance, and then I typically make sure that the wheel still rolls. You know, and I'll be honest, I don't always get rolling wheels, but I would say on 95% of the things I do, restorations and customs, uh, they have rolling wheels. Sometimes when I do a wheel swap, it's just not possible. And those wind up being more for aesthetics. I didn't want to drip any super glue on my nice paint job. So I moved it over to the side like that. Uh, but then anyway, I get that other side and I just use my finger to line up the hole. Push it on, make sure it rolls, make sure the other one still rolls. And if you look, that's what it looks like. I think it looks really good. It looks professional and maybe it isn't the original axle, but it doesn't look bad. So now it's just a matter of dropping that windscreen in there. And uh, I still have to sleeve that one. I'm not going to do that on camera because you saw how I did it. And this video has already, you know, gotten past the 20 minute mark. And I, I usually don't like making videos this long. I like them to be uh, 15 to 18 minutes long. I use super glue for this, uh, just a very small drop. Usually I use adhesive, but this time I use super glue. But this is kind of where I started. And uh, if you look closely, you can see that, you know, even these two pieces are not really the same color. Uh, and I wanted them to be the same color, but variations in color happen all the time. And it's part of it is environmental, uh, part of it is age, part of it is how much it got played with. I mean, what happens when you, uh, you know, drop a Matchbox car into Cherry Kool-Aid and leave it there for a day and a half? I don't know. But anyway, why don't we take a look at where I wound up? So let me give a shout out here to MK Models for uh, the canopies for this. Uh, I'll have a uh, link to their website in the description. I think it turned out really well. So there you have it, the Matchbox 1E and 2D Mercedes truck and trailer. Stick around for an episode of The Bench if you like that kind of thing. Uh, if you don't, this is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey, thanks for sticking around for this episode of The Bench. I picked a casting for the Back to the 50s. It's a 1957 Chevrolet. And it's uh, got this really ugly tampo on the side that says Malto Meal. So I can guarantee you when I get done with it, it won't look anything like this. And by overwhelming majority, uh, everybody says I should do the T-Bird first. So uh, in the next day or so, maybe even a little later today, I'm going to start working on a restoration of this, but I still have to do my doggone squad car for the uh, uh, restoration that I'm doing for the 12th. Actually, it's going to be a custom, but that's coming up. And hey, you guys, you really want to check this out because I have never seen anything like this before. Apparently, it's from a company called Siku, and it's a 155th scale Mercedes-Benz limousine. Uh, and I want to do something with it, and before anybody gets their undies in a bunch, the casting has already been split. I think that's the original color, but God, what an ugly color for a limo. So why don't you put a comment below and tell me what you think I ought to do with this. Uh, this is Time Rider. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you see you in the next video. Take care.